it is meant to actually when you look at an act that is a preferential procurement um, act that is introduced or that is managed by PTI, Department of Trade and Industry. But then, as they effect it now in its, in its revised form, for me, it impacts a lot on how we are supposed to contribute towards the government agenda and objectives. Because it brings in the 80-20 or 90-10 principle, where it looks at the threshold. So only your 10%, for instance, will count for your triple BE, or 20% of this, of, of your tender or your contract will, will, uh, will count as triple BE. But if you look at a contract that is 50 million and then you look at 20, 20%, for instance, it, it actually, for me, diffuses the purpose of building your local, um, your local companies or SMEs because, I mean, if you are a big company, if you are those big companies out there, your big blue chip companies, it wouldn't matter as long as you compete on price and quality because it says your functionality will be 90% or 80% and then 10% or 20 will be your triple PDE, which means then I don't, it doesn't matter if I'm big, 10% doesn't matter as long as on functionality and price I qualify or I comply, then uh, it doesn't matter. I don't have to actually go and make an effort in terms of improving my status, in terms of empowering, you know, um, drive empowerment within my company. So for me, I think DTI has to rethink uh, Triple PFA because as we as we speak now, we're supposed to have all the SOEs to have complied by the 7th of December last year. However, as state-owned enterprises, we came together and we wrote to the Department of Trial of Industry, but uh, to date we're still awaiting um, response from them. However, there are some smaller SOEs who were not part of, uh, you know, the bigger forum of state-owned uh, procurement forum, which is a SUF. So they are complying as of from as of December because remember, Triple PFA is an act. So if you don't comply with it, then you are you are actually in breach, and you can be taken to court. And these suppliers out there that are big, they know that. Even though we set aside, you know, as SOEs some portions for SMEs. But they can go and challenge us in court and they will win because there's an act that has been passed by government and we are not following it. So it is a big challenge and for me it is really, really taking us backwards because we are unable to enforce, you know, your empowerment objectives through procurement, which is why, which for me the government should drive actual empowerment uh, for local companies and to create jobs through the government spend that we have. So it is a big challenge, so we are still awaiting. So I think it's at this stage is let's watch the space, but from ourselves, we are engaging the Department of Trade and Industry and also for them to help us to drive the message to our treasure. In its current form, I think yes. There is no way I think uh, we can influence the 2013 plan significantly with the, the state of affairs at it, as it is. However, if we still get, if we still get that, um, amnesty to say we can still go on procuring the way we're procuring, then I think we can. However, the other, I think, option we can do, we can take a state or end up is to look at our business plans and to look at our spend and look at the commodities that we think will affect industry and go to, uh, treasury to say we ask for amnesty in these, for instance, categories of commodities so that we can contribute to that plan. If we get that um, amnesty, then yes, I think we can, we, can, uh, we can impact positively. However, it is a process. I mean, 2015 is, is here. Or if you look now, now writing to, you know, as we know, writing to the department, it takes long. It has to go through, for instance, our minister through to their minister, and then it takes them delivery, then it's prolonged. And then we missed the boat in that instance. So for me, I think probably we need a critical mass to sit and debate this issue as soon as possible because I think we are losing benefits. We are losing leverage. We're losing opportunities to create um, benefits or opportunities for SMEs or to impact positively on industrialization. Because if you look at 1020, which, which, who will be taking, who, which financiers will take a risk? on the smaller companies or when you can't see the benefits that you will take, or even your entrepreneurs. 
who can say yes i see i see there's a future there for a 10 or 20 percent in terms of the capital spend the billions of the capital spend if you look at your escoms your transmit there's a there's a i mean significant huge capital spend but if you look if it's 13 billion and then there's 10 percent of that maybe yes for a short period but is it sustainable i think not Audio